Okay, moving over to this section of the studio, we'll start up here at the top of the rack with the Korg Reissue Arp Odyssey with mini keys. This thing's a lot of fun. I don't know how it stacks up to the original Odyssey. I've never played one, but definitely has a sound. It's got some, uh, it's a really interesting routing layout. It's not like, it's not like a lot of other synths I've noticed in terms of, you know, oscillator, filter, ADSR. It's, it's laid out in a kind of a different way, but it definitely has a sound, it's really cool. Down here at the bot, uh, below it is um, my Sequential Circuits Profit 600, which I really love. It has a, you know, it's one of my few kind of like analog poly synths that are here in the studio. Sounds great. Down below that is one of my flagship synths, one of my favorites. It's a Yamaha CS15. Uh, and this thing is sort of like the unsung hero of the Yamaha CS line. It doesn't sound like the CS80 or any of those other ones that people love necessarily, it, it, but it, you know, it has the, the CS distinction, but that's a, about where the similarities end, I think. The sound is just fantastic though a lot of it's a great solo synth but it's great for some really interesting effects it's dual oscillator two filters um, it's got this great little brilliance fader here I might set it up in another video too but um, I can actually control it via CV from logic by going through my ms20 talk about that some other time but this thing is really I just love this synthesizer up really cool sound down below it is a really rare find that I got on Facebook marketplace about a year or two ago it's this maxi Korg Univox maxi Korg before Korg was Korg it was uh, Univox and uh, this is, I think it's also called the DV800. <clears throat> DV this thing, they're very rare, hard to find them. So uh, I think it's from about 1974 or 75. One of the interesting things about this piece is the nomenclature they use on the control panel under VCF, they have these things called travelers, which is, you know, it's a, never heard that before, but it, it kind of affects the timbre of the filter. You can hear that. Um, and again, this is a, this is like a stacked version. I think it's, is it the micro Korg? I can't remember. This is basically two, two of those other Korgs stacked together because you, you'll see in the layout, you've got, uh, you know, VCO1 and then VCO2, pretty much identical controls for each one. But again, getting back to the, the controls, it's it's almost like they're still trying to figure out what to call different different things on here. So we have um, <laughs> this is this is a fun one. So it's got percussion. That's for like I guess a real kind of clippy sound in the in the VCA section. So this would be your ADSR, but it's got this other designation called singing. So if you pull this down a little bit, it, it pulls the release time out a little bit. So that's a really interesting thing about this synth, but this thing sounds, the, the low end on this, again, I may have to do another video, but the, uh, the low end on this is just sinister. So that's a lot of fun to play with. A lot of us, a lot of effects. Okay, down below the Korg is my 1978 Mark I Rhodes Suitcase 73. I love this piano. It's probably my favorite instrument of everything that I own. Rhodes was probably one of the first like vintage pianos that I ever owned, bought one 
many years ago. And uh, this one, the vibrato is on the fritz. Unfortunately, you need to take it into the shop, but we all know that sound. It's the one that we all know and love. Okay, next section is monosynth land. Um, starting at the top, I've got another Korg reissue, the MS-20. I know these are they seem to be pretty popular. A lot of them floating around. This thing is just, it's got that crazy squelchy filter. And it's got this crazy patch bay over here that you can do all kind of stuff with. Um, like I said earlier, I like to uh, route CV out from it into my Yamaha CS15 over here because this one has MIDI and the CS does not. So, But it, it has some really cool sounds on its own. Really more of a noisemaker sound effect type, type of machine in terms of how I use it. Down below it is the Mo Grandmother. I love this thing. The key bed feels fantastic. The controls are nice and they've got some, you can just feel the build quality of this thing, even though it's you know, got classic side caps and things like that. It, it just feels like a sturdy machine and the, it just sounds fantastic. This spring reverb is really cool. And it's a great noisemaker, but it's also just, I love it for synth solos. And... Um, filter on it sounds great. It's got some, I can't remember, something like 40 patch points. So it's semi-modular, as they say in the uh, manual. Great little piece down below it is my subsequent 37. I probably need to find a better location for it in the studio because down here, tucked underneath all this stuff, it doesn't see a lot of action. But man, this thing sounds, sounds really great. It doesn't get the face time it deserves. Okay, I'm gonna move over here to the 80s synth section of the studios. I have quite a bit of stuff over here. Starting up here at the top is uh, an old Roland JX8P. Man, this thing sounds so cool. Would love to have a uh, have the, con the programmer for it. Man, those things are expensive. I have an iPad app that works pretty good for it. It's a great, great synth. Down below it, tucked underneath, kind of hidden, is my Roland D50. And um, we all know that one, the one we know and love. ESQ1 down below it, another fantastic, lots of bells and whistles on this. Filter on it sounds fantastic. Uh, here's my second DX7. Um, Kind of have more kind of sound effects type of sounds loaded into this one. Also have two of the cartridges. Got another one in there. I think it's the, the factory. Down below it, we also have the Roland Alpha Juno 2. And this thing sounds really impressed with this this synth. Again, I, I have another iPad app that will bring up the, uh, is it the PG 300 or whatever that programming unit is that will, that expands the programmability of it. But this is a lot of 80s synth goodness over here on this corner. 